Hi, welcome to Adoption Now, your adoption show. I'm April Fallon. Enjoy this episode. Hey, everybody, this is April Fallon, the host of Adoption Now telling your adoption story on your adoption show. Today, we are super excited. We have Noah in the studio. Hey, Noah. Hi. We've never been side by side. No, we haven't. Well, I mean, in life, we have been. I mean, in life, of course, but, you know, on the podcast. We haven't been. I'm really excited. Season seven. Season seven is here. Did you think we'd get there? No. It's the perfect number, though. (laughs) It is the perfect number. Is this going to be our last season? Whoa, I don't know. We don't know. We have so many stories. You know what? We love the show because we are so honored to have so many guests. That's a big thing in the podcast world. It's like, how are we going to have guests? How are we going to get people? So many of you have written in your stories and they are wonderful. I always say this. Remember, if we haven't gotten to your story yet, we have not forgotten you. Your story is great and amazing. We're just fil- filtering through all of them, right, Noah? Yes. But how excited are we when we get a story and we're like going to bed or we wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to hear this one. It's so fun because it's it just feels like it's never ending. So I don't think there is ever really a true end to our seasons. We got to get to eight because eight is our number. It is our number. Yeah. yeah. We're about to celebrate our 15 year anniversary here December 8th December 8th yeah that's right so it's exciting no you're right waking up and hearing the stories we just we love you guys and we love that you share your life with us if you're new to adoption now welcome we are a community of adoptees birth parents and adoptive parents Noah and I have four children through adoption, and we're grateful for this connection with you, with our stories, with adoptees, with adoptive parents, and also birth parents. It really brings the triad together, and we understand the whole picture. I want to let you know, if you're wondering, I know this month is Adoption Month and National Adoption Month, and if you're like, all these stories are adoptees. It's funny because I always say God knows how we're going to lay everything out. And we had a bunch of stories, but people got sick. Our producer got sick. We got sick. Kids got sick. Our guest kids got sick. I mean, it's just like, it's been a crazy month of just people being sick. Yeah, it's been hard, but we've been able to continue to support and continue to tell stories even through that. We've had adoptee stories, which I think is super cool because we get this chance to talk to adoptees and ask them, what can we do better as parents, right? What can we do with our kids or ask them advice? And they really love that. And I think it's it's really important to have an adoptee share their story and give them a valid chance and to hear what they have to say, because it's so, so important. I really love it because I feel like I get the benefit from all these different adoptees because we have four adopted kids. Mm-hmm. So it's a huge benefit to be able to listen and even it, there's always something that comes up in the story that we can relate to and we can mm-hmm. put into our own lives. Yes. So like the last couple have been pretty amazing yes. for our family. Okay, today is kind of a special episode. We have a guest on that helped our family tremendously. We talked a little bit about her um I think the last episode of season 6. And we just told you that we did this brain mapping thing and today she's going to go into detail all about it. We met her in Denver and she came up to us and said, "You guys, we had spoken at a church in Denver and she said, "I help families. I help adoptive families." families. We're like, what? What do you do? And so we just connected with her. And today she is going to talk about her book. She wrote a book called Your Inner Child. And she speaks on the topic of brain mapping. Wendy Gossett, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so fantastic to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, we were so excited to work with you. And what you've done for our family has been amazing. In the adoption world, we're always trying to figure out if our kids' behavior is normal and healthy, or are they having an adoption issue or a trauma issue, right? And for some of us who have not raised birth children, we really don't even know the difference. So we're always like, oh no, is this is this an issue? And what you came and did was you separated personality versus trauma and adoption issues. And we feel like Life is so much more clear now. And I think our kids feel more understood. Absolutely. I I mean, when I say that it's a benefit to me personally, this 
probably was, I would say hands down, one of the most beneficial um, stories. It's not really a story, but one of the most beneficial times that we've had as a, as a family and really supporting our parenting. I feel way better equipped now. I mean, I, it, it's amazing to me how going into it, I thought I, I, I've got some decent tools in my belt. And then you go through this process with you, Wendy. It was amazing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, I am. It, you have no idea how excited that makes me. It just kind of makes my hair curl up on top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I didn't know this was going to be on video today. Anyway, I've got I know my I, I did put that on you. That's my fault. But you, you still look great. <laughs> anyway, um, it was such a joy to work with you. And I absolutely love working with parents that have adopted kids. Because in my opinion, I think you guys are super parents. I mean, anybody who adopts kids are already like the best parents on the planet. And to know that I've given you tools that, you know, you already were fantastic parents. And that's what I find with the the families that I work with, that they're already fantastic parents and they just want to go deeper. They just want to understand their kids better. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I also help families that are struggling for sure. And I would say, you know, most of the parents that come to me are struggling with one of their kids um, that they don't understand. And they're, you know, getting along fine as a family, but they just need more peace in their home. Like who doesn't need Mm -hmm. more peace in their home? And so I just help, um, I help parents understand the lens that they're looking through. And so we all have biases and and how we see the world. Albert Einstein said that there, you know, is really no reality. It's all just our perception of reality. And so um, based on how we were parented and based on our own personality and based on our own experiences, we come to the world with all these biases and expectations. And so I help parents understand what realistic expectations are for each one of their kids. Because a lot of times, you know, what comes so easily to us, it's Mm -hmm. like the air we breathe, the water we swim in is really difficult for someone else. It's Um, so true. Tell us us about your daughter, because you, you kind of discovered this with your own child. Yeah. So I have a master's in education and I was a corporate trainer. I was using Myers-Briggs and all kinds of personality modalities. That could be a rap song, personality (laughs) modality. Um, Anyway, in, in the corporate sector. And when I had my own daughter, I thought I was so well equipped to parent her and I was going to parent her differently than my mom and I, you know, our relationship, because I felt like my mom didn't understand me. I didn't understand her. and I was going to understand my child and we were going to get along. And, and at age five, we were already starting to butt heads because we were so different. And luckily I had all this experience in temperament and I was able to apply Um, what I knew from that to my own daughter. And we actually had our brains mapped through an EEG. uh, It was neuro-optimized, like a a brain balance sort of place. Um, And what I showed you on paper and what I show parents on paper is what they actually showed us in a brain map that the geography of my daughter's brain and my brain are completely opposite I am a feeler, 100% demonstrative with my feelings. And because I'm a woman, um, 75% of women are feelers. And I was just expecting my daughter to respond to my nurturing and Mm -hmm. the way I am. And it was actually like sandpaper for her because her number one brain function is introverted feeling, or I'm sorry, introverted thinking, which is all logic, very black and white, very straightforward truth teller, um, doesn't like a lot of emotion. In fact, that's her most inferior brain function. And so the two of us with awareness could balance each other out and complement each other. But without the awareness, we were just butting heads. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was what caused me to, to look into temperament and, 
it's been the best thing for us because we're still extremely different, but we know that we complete each other. And so we're really close as a result of that. I think that's what we experience as well is just a shift in understanding these little people that we have in our house, understanding ourselves and understanding each other, right? That's what we really needed. And what happens with Wendy is when you connect with her, she sends you a personality test and you take it for yourself. Your husband takes it or your spouse takes it. And then your children, you take it for your children or if they're old enough. And then you come together and you kind of explain how everybody works together. And so we had this opportunity to do this with Wendy. And I feel I would I just love it so much because I was struggling the same way you were, is that I was parenting my children with feeling, hey guys. And some of them were responding, right? Because they're feelers. But the ones that aren't feelers were looking at me like, why are you talking like that? And I don't <laughs> and even want to answer too. your question. They did that to yes. me too, where yeah. like kind of like with your daughter being like 75% of all girls are in a, in that emotional where my son is actually more like that and I am not. And so for so long, I've always tried to like put him in my box of understanding and thinking and processing and expecting him to then respond positively. And I can't tell you just in the last month how much things have changed where mm -hmm. I can, I'm going to get emotional <laughs> talking about it because it, you run as a parent, you run into, t into times where you get so frustrated because you can't, connect with your kid and you so desperately want to have that and so to be able to do that the way that you were able to explain it in both a logical and an emotional way right so you're able to really take all what are the eight different kind of categories very good Noah and, and, <laughs> you passed <laughs> but yeah. being able to do that and then explain that and really um it, it's just such a helpful thing we've talked to so many friends and, and parents ourselves already mm -hmm. and saying, you've got to do this if for anything else to be able to connect just a little bit more with your kids and yeah. your and your spouse too. Yeah, I, I think in the adoption world for me, some of the response that I was getting from our middle two kids felt like, do they have attachment issues? Like, are they attached to me? Are they upset about something bigger? And honestly, it was because I was approaching them in not a way that was their personality, right? And now the shift, especially between Vivi and I, is so wonderful. And spending time with her one-on-one, -on -one, but in the way that she wants to, not like going shopping, where my other two girls are very much like, yeah. And then she wanted to do something else and recognizing that she is sensory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so, her. But she's also an introvert. Right. So that kind of shifts yeah. things, too, because my because Lily is also, I mean, so much like me, but she's introverted. So that changes the dynamic there, too. And often Lily and I do have moments because she's a feeler, but I didn't realize how much she needed to be in her room alone and just you know, really recharge that way. I was like, come on, let's go, let's go. And AJ is the only one that can keep up with me, right? I'm like, he's uh -huh. the most attached, but that is not true. It doesn't mean he's the most attached. He's just the most like me, right? We're the same yes. and we yes. get each other. But we found out that Noah and Malia are the same. And so now parenting her, I'm like, oh, what would Noah do in this situation? Like, how would Noah feel about this, right? And really trying to think how she thinks and not just, you know, giving gifts or, I mean, it's so much deeper. And I just see our kids are so much happier. Do we get it right every time? No, because you factor in being tired. You factor in all the normal parenting stuff, right? That can make you off and you wish you had done better. But at least we have, like you said, a roadmap. We go back to this book. We look mm -hmm. up their their stuff, we read about it, and he's doing it for me. And sometimes he'll say to me, I just never knew you thought like this. Like, <laughs> I can't believe this. Well, it just came up the other day. We were talking about something. You're like, man, I, I can't do this even for a year. And in my way of thinking, I'm like, it's a year. That's no big deal. But then <laughs> for to be able to understand like just how April processes things, a year is a long time for her personality. And, you know, mm -hmm. before I'd probably be like really harsh and judgmental me like, Pfft. It's a year. So what? But now it's like, oh, yeah, that's probably really hard. Like a month would be really hard. It was so nice for him to say, 
yeah, I can see how that would be really hard for you before I didn't understand that. And I was, I mean, that makes a world of difference, right? You can't change anything necessarily. He's not trying to make me more like him or vice versa, because that is that does not work, right? But understanding and then helping each other through that, see the bigger picture, right? See the end goal. And I'm always really good with AJ. And I felt sad that they were missing each other because this is his dad. And it's like he couldn't understand. But now we just went through this huge thing with AJ and the basketball team. And he's in sixth grade. And we didn't realize they only take mainly seventh graders. And AJ just went through so much. And I feel like you leaned on me and trying to understand like, okay, April as like a sixth grader, right? What she feel like? This would be devastating. And you didn't parent him from the way that you felt, although you could add in the way you felt through your personality, right? But you didn't have to become him. You just had to understand him. Right. Yeah, yeah that's so great the way you said that. I, I call that differentiation because, you know, kids tend to rebel. They don't rebel on purpose. They rebel because they're trying to differentiate from you. Mm. They're trying to say, I am different from you and I want you to see that. I want you to see me and I want you to see how different I am from my siblings. Mm -hmm. And so when you're coming at them already saying, this is how I am, AJ, and, and this is how I would respond or how I would approach it. But I know I'm different from you. You know, mm -hmm. Noah, I'm talking about you, um, yeah. you know, and, and so not only are you teaching him about you, which teaches him about other personalities in the world, um, but you're also acknowledging how different the two of you are. So now he doesn't feel like he has to run away from you mm -hmm. to show you that you're different because right. you're already doing that differentiation for him. And, you know, I love to tell my parents too, that it's this mutual respect. So, so many times it's, it's arbitrary parenting where, you know, you're telling the kids, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to improve. This is, you know, whatever. Um, and some parents lecture more than others too. And so it's always good to be aware of that. Um, but uh, it's wonderful when you can have this mutual teaching relationship, this mutual respect mm -hmm. where you can say, you know, I have these strengths, but then I also have these limitations because I feel that no one is born with a bunch of weaknesses. You're born with strengths and the weaknesses form from overusing, underusing, or misusing those strengths. And so you're able to say, you know, these are my strengths. And, you know, for example, one of your strengths might be, you know, keeping things really neat and organized. And then you might say, but I realize that that's not really one of your strengths. You're more creative. And mm -hmm. you know what? I really lack in the area of creativity. So guess what? You totally help me in the area of creativity. I love to learn from you. And so then that opens it up for that child then to say, well, dad, I want to learn from you, you know, with mm -hmm. that you're more organized or whatever. But it starts with the parents um, acknowledging the strengths of the child that they lack and for the parent to model um, that there's always things where that we can grow on and that we mm -hmm. grow in and that we can improve on. So I have a million stories like the fruit from being with you just goes on and on. You suggested with Lily that we start a journal that we write back and forth, right? That she loves writing. She's very creative, but she doesn't always like to sit and have a long talk. Sometimes she does, but if I don't have the time to do that, let's start this journal. And I thought it was really cool because not only did she love that, but we had a guest on, I think two episodes ago, and she said a teacher changed her life because she started journaling back and forth with this. She wanted connection and she wasn't doing well in school. And they kept saying, oh, it's her, it's her, you know, behavior, or does she have a learning disability? Is this adoption? All these things. And you know what it was? she wasn't connecting with her teacher. And if she wasn't going to get that connection, she wasn't going to do what the teacher wanted. And I know a lot of kids want connection, but for her and her personality, that's what she needed to even write in her book, to even do math. 
She had to know. And this teacher took time out with the journal thing that you suggested. The teacher said, your goal is not a sticker. Your goal is lunch with me. Oh my goodness. And then she started changing her life and working towards these goals that were more inner personal, right? I mean, that's just understanding a person's little personality and what they want. And I just love that. I love that you have done this for our family. We have just gone through it with AJ. I'm telling you with the basketball and then Noah was coaching a team. The other, can I talk about this? You know, it's like a sting. (laughs) But I mean, this is just where we applied this. This is where we went to the tools, right? Is, you know, there was this thing that happened that the other coach was really angry, like yelling. That is not Noah's personality. Noah is very much a calm thinker and he usually gets to the bottom things by being very calm and very stern. And people usually follow what he's saying. In this situation, the loud, manipulative coach won, basically. And he fought in this like winning game point. It was a big deal. And AJ was really, really disappointed. And I think Noah and I like came together and said, listen, this is what he, he wanted you to be that loud person, but it is okay if you talk to him and say, that's not who I am, but I'm going to, I mean, I want to try to do those things. Like, and I could talk to Noah and say, this is how he's feeling. And I could talk to AJ and be like, listen, dad did awesome. Like he did awesome. And the way that that all panned out, nobody could have even guessed, but here is what he was feeling, right? Because I'm reading the book. And it just felt like it wasn't a big explosion. It was just a bunch of pain that we were making our way through and misunderstanding. But I feel like he so quickly like bounced back, you know? And it wasn't like, oh, dad just doesn't get me, dad. And we're going into teenage years where you don't get me as a big deal. If we can start right now saying, Hey, we don't always, I probably do a little bit better, but your dad showed up. You know, your dad was there. He was fighting for the team. He fights in a different way. He's not going to yell like that coach because that's not his personality. And I think AJ even was understanding us better. Our our dynamic. What do you think? I know it was a hard (laughs) weekend. (laughs) It was hard, but yeah, I think just being able to, to process through very differently and being able to acknowledge where my weaknesses are. And and I mean, from a coach's perspective, there are so many things I can learn from that just in general, but being able to, cause you, you know, we've got AJ on the team, but there's other personalities on the team too. And as a whole, you could sense the entire team needed something that I was not able to necessarily give them in the way that they really needed. And so as a coach, like being able to refocus where my thought process and even where my focus is during the end of a game. It's there's so many lessons in it, but then being able to come take a step back and really look at like from a personality perspective, like you said, I have these strengths, right? Which then if I'm not really spending time developing myself can actually become weaknesses too. Right. And so being able to say, okay, there are certain things I was actually just telling April, I said, I fully understand why you need at least one assistant coach now, if not more. <laughs> He's like, I was going to pull <laughs> you from the crowd because, because you were going to yell at the coach, yeah. right? And try to, because just try to figure it out and try to do what's best for the team. But when we don't succeed, we can at least understand each other. And I feel like that's success. And I think there's a, there's this, maybe this is just a male ego thing, but there's definitely as a dad and as a man, you want to be all things to all people. Right. And so it's really hard to, to say, I mean, it's easy to say, these are my strengths. Anybody can do that, but to say, okay, these are not my strengths. These are the areas that I don't have real true strength in, but then to acknowledge that there are others who do kind of like what you're saying, some may be really organized, but then others are not, but they're creative or Mm -hmm. whatever those traits are. And that I think has been really crucial in our parenting Mm -hmm in our marriage, um, even even just being able to say as a husband and a wife, we're on an equal playing field from day one. We're not having to say, well, you have this strength, but I think you should too. No. It's, or these strengths are more important. Yes. If yeah. you have these, then you're more valuable. And that's just not true that yeah. we all play this role. And and also we, we've learned 
what our strengths are. And when we see that we're not doing them, like if we have a child that's really organized and all of a sudden they're not organized, it's also a clue that something's wrong. And yeah. we can say, oh, what's going on? You know, you forgot your book and they never forget their book on library day. What? And then they're like, oh, they start to think about what's going on and we are watching them differently now. And it's all because of you. Yeah, oh you, you, you we needed it. we needed you 15 years ago when yeah. we got married. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, I, talk. um, I talked earlier about, you know, you complete me, like my daughter and I, how we're opposite. And, you know, April, you and Vivi are mm -hmm. that opposite, those opposites as well. Um, but like you said, Noah, there are eight brain functions and everyone prefers four and so the recipe for chemistry in couples is usually you have the same four brain functions, but they're in inverted order. Mm -hmm. And so you balance each other out. And I like to say that before marriage, it's chemistry. That's what creates that spark. But then after marriage, it's carpentry because it's a lot of work mm -hmm. because you have to understand each other. Um, you know, that the very thing yeah. that attracted you can be the thing that repels you yeah. once you're married because it's your most inferior function, <laughs> but it's your partner's number one function. And that does um, not go away. Like you April don't stop being annoyed at too things. hard. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing too hard. But now I know I don't feel so misunderstood, you know, yes. and like he just doesn't get me. It's like he gets me and he's still annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah. Doesn't mean those things don't. <laughs> Just because you understand something doesn't mean it's any better. But well, you're, you're right with the questions. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it can be so validating to know that, um, you know, I own who I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I can't be everything. I, you know, we try to be, but, you know, and some people do a, a better job at being everything than, than others. But, you know, when it comes down to it, we want to encourage our kids and ourselves to work with the strengths that we've been given, um, because that's going to be the best version of ourselves, as opposed to trying to be all things to all right. people. Right. Um, or taking know, things personally. You know, mm -hmm. I think parents often, especially in adoption, you take it personally. Like, are they not happy here? Are they not happy? I'm your, these are questions that biological parents often don't have. Are they not happy that I'm their mom? Maybe, maybe. And you know, I mean, but it's deeper in our case because they could have had another mom, yes. you know, and, and they could, w would they be happier with their biological family? And I always thought a little bit, what if their biological family got them better and I'm just not getting them because we're, you go down this bad spiral and you yeah. stop that spiral. And I, I want to talk about when, when the personalities are switched, that can be really hard too. For instance, AJ and I are more like, he talks nonstop. My friends who have boys say, my son tells me nothing. I'm like, really? Because when AJ comes home, he sits down and tells me everything that's going on. And that's because he has actually, would you say 75% more females have his personality? And mm -hmm. that's hard for Noah. He's like, he's come on, what are you doing talking so much? Let's go play, you know? And it's like, oh, it switched. But also with Vivi, Vivi, I was trying to talk to her in, in like, you know, this like, woo, wave, all emotional. And her personality is in more males than it is in females. And yes. so, and it does, I don't want to discourage her from who she is, right? But she's going to think more like Noah, right? We have two that think like Noah and two that think like me. And it just, it's so much better. I go to him all the time. I'm like, what does she need? Does she need me to hug her? Because she kind of is like not a snuggly person. Right. Do I need to wait for her to come to me? And I, I don't even think anymore, Wendy. I don't even go down that trail anymore of she maybe she doesn't love me or maybe we're not connecting or because I don't even believe that oh. is true. That is not true. She belongs where God put her. She belongs with us. Do I think that she may go back and visit her biological family and connect in different ways? Absolutely. We want that. But for right here, right now, she is with Noah and I, and our kids are with us for a purpose. They have a destiny. And you taught us how we all fit together. And I tell them all the time, I need you. I need you. 
I need your little creative mind. I need you who you don't think, you know, Vivi doesn't think emotionally. She just yeah. does. But man, she pulls the family through a lot when if AJ's upset about basketball and he's crying and Noah's right. She's the one who is actually pretty solid. And during the time that we were last weekend, I mean, she was like doing the things that she knows to do, putting the shoes away. She went to, to organizing, right? Because that's what she knew she could do to help the family. And what a great role to be like, I know yeah. you don't understand. We're all crying, but you are doing you and we need you. Yeah. And it's, it's, it can be the worst thing in the world when you have an outlier in the family that's literally the only one that has that brain function or that set of strengths in the family or the only introvert or um, it can be a terrible, terrible thing if it goes unaware. But like Vivi, if you understand, then you can call her out as mm -hmm. special because she has these strengths that no one else in the family has, mm -hmm. but I've seen it work the other way too, where the parents come to me and they're like, Oh, you know, our son, he's just like, you know, it's, it's rough being around him. It's just, he's prickly. He's throwing the whole family off. Well, it turns out that the family just didn't understand him. He, he was, he felt like an alien in his own family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's, that's why I just get so much joy working with parents because I feel like I'm able to um, just help them just unwrap the gifts that are in their own family that they don't even really understand because they're looking through a blurry lens mm -hmm. when they see their kids, just like I was with my daughter. I mean, when you have a five-year-old who doesn't show appreciation when you take her out of school to go see Frozen, like I took her out of school one day to go to see Frozen with me. And she didn't even crack a smile. She didn't even <laughs> say thank you. And I thought she was broken. I, I didn't like my own daughter mm -hmm. because she just seemed unappreciative. And, you know, and I didn't have the added um, issue of having her be adopted and thinking that she didn't love me. So I can't imagine how that would feel, mm -hmm. but you know, that's how I felt with her. You know, I would be, I wanted my daughter to sing more than anything as I'm a singer and I would be singing in the car, rehearsal, rehearsing for something. And she was only four or five and she'd say, stop singing, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you see these Hallmark movies where the mom is singing to her child and my child's like, Stop. Stop singing, mommy. <laughs> she sings with you now, though. She is a worship leader. She Aww. sings all the time in her room. I just had to back off. Yep. It's kind of like mm -hmm. you, you and AJ, Noah. I had to back off and just let my will for that die. And, and what happened with her personality type, and I can tell every parent that has a child like my daughter, just plant the seed and walk away mm -hmm. because... They will come around, but it has to look like it's their idea. It has to look like. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just so, have a, a great message for adoptive parents. If you're out there and you're listening to this and you're like, I need Wendy, I need a coach. I need someone to help me understand. Because if we don't understand our little people, that little thing that we're talking about right now, that um, insecurity that we have as a mom saying, oh, does, your, does this child like me? Or even the child saying, no one gets me. I'm adopted and no one gets me. We want to end that. We want to put an end to that. That is a little voice that is not yeah. true. And if your family was brought together through adoption, learning to understand each other is so, so valuable so that you can take that little voice out and stop that right now because our little yeah. people really need to feel understood. And the last thing we want is them to grow up and be like, I don't even, I didn't belong in my family. I was adopted and I didn't belong. Oh my gosh, that just like breaks my heart. And I was seeing that we were misunderstanding our kids in a way that I was feeling like, are we going down that road? And then you kind of reeled us back in. And I just want to show, um, this has writing all over it. And if you're listening to this on podcast, this is also on YouTube. So you can see us and you can see what I'm, I'm showing you right now. But there are little like, icons for every part of their personality. And if you can see, we have the same icons just in different order. So there are strengths and we can look at this as our roadmap and say, oh, okay, right now, okay, AJ's acting this way. And, and then, you know, 
he does have a little bit of the house, but it's very last, right? And so you explain how those roles play, those little icons play in a little child's life or in our lives and how to bring those, what you call the baby out in them, what part of them is a teenager. I know it's kind of like complex to understand it, but you really take people through um, the phases of even the icons that they have. Yeah. So I, you know, it's like a, a car model um, with the psychological functions and it's kind of like the back end of Myers Briggs. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's the most user friendly, but very diagnostic tool. Um, just like what you're doing right there. You look at that brain map and you can diagnose what's going on with AJ based on how his brain is situated, the geography of his brain. And with AJ, the reason he is so creative, he has the most creative brain out there. Um, what balances that creative, open-minded brain is his baby function, which is the details. And it's it's designed to balance his brain. And as an adult, he'll find much more balance as his brain develops. But as a child, it's very out of balance. And he's all about the big picture and going from A to Z, but he skips B through Y. (laughs) And so it's like, um, it's like passengers in a car, we all prefer four brain functions the most. And whatever um, brain function is driving, that is most of our personality, but we have a co pilot in the front seat also. So our front seat brain functions make up 80% of our personality. And then we have a teenager and a baby in the back seat. And those are underdeveloped. Um, and they start developing when your child's, you know, around 10, 11, 12 years old. And then they just continue to develop from there. So I'm even uh, um, able to help parents kind of forecast um, what qualities are going to develop in their child mm. down the road. And the, the book talks about that. Um, all ages, what you're going to be able to expect from your child and even what you're going to kind of expect from them as an adult and what you can kind of steer them towards and steer them away from. Even today on the way over here, I mean, I could talk to you all day about this. I know we could do like because the all the things in our family right now. April and I were even talking about something with AJ and how Mm -hmm. we needed to like get him to this place of understanding. And now I'm sitting here listening to you again and talking and I'm like, no, we don't need to get him to a place of understanding. We need to understand (laughs) almost like a reminder of this is just how he functions. And so in that, like you're saying, you know, encourage the, the weaker parts of that personality to come forward. But at the same time, it's, it's just, that's his personality. Like that may be something for the rest of his life. Right. And I do want to say that as we kind of pull apart, oh, this is their personality, you will still probably see adoption issues, right? It's not like this is going to solve trauma, but you get to pull it apart and say, oh, okay, that is not, I'm taking that into something it's not. And just have a clearer picture of what kind of help you need to get your child. There are children who need to be in trauma therapy, a hundred percent. And then also how their personality responds to trauma, right? How they're going to each talk about their adoption, right? AJ is like, yeah, I'm adopted. Cool. The other ones are more introverted. Does it bother them? I don't know. We have to talk about that. And we will bring in a therapist to do that. We, we don't say that, oh, finding their, you know, their personalities out mean, means that you just it's all fine. I hope it is, but we are open to, because I know some people are going to listen to this and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, we, I, we definitely have trauma in our home and we are not trying to invalidate that one bit. We just want you to understand each other. And it's so good for your spouse and you to be on the same page and to handle it um, together. And I think that that's really what we're feeling now is like, okay, we're together in this. There's a stigma around the whole trauma and adoption too. And I think this is a tool that actually allows you to then separate the two because once you have this, now I can go back and we can talk about, okay, now that we know that these are the personality types and the different traits we're seeing, it's almost easier now to identify trauma versus just personality Mm -hmm. where before it's just, oh, they're adopted. So it's gotta be trauma. Mm -hmm. And like April said, we are not discrediting that at all. Uh, This is really, I think a tool to, to improve your ability as a parent. And it's, I think it's not just for adoptive parents. I mean, this no, is- No, no. This is- But we're, this is our topic. So Absolutely. And sometimes some things that 
kids go through are not for adoptive parents. Like it just doesn't work. But this is one of those things that can go both ways. I just am passionate about it. And I'm talking to so many different families and I'm always thinking, you need Wendy. Because they're like, I don't know. All of a sudden this thing came up in fourth grade and our daughter's bawling her eyes out. And we've never had anything happen like this before. And and it's like, oh, I, you need Wendy because she's going to help you separate that and parent her. And I've sent lots of families to you. I want people to go to you. They're going to call you. How do they get a hold of you? Well, I have a website, wendygossett.com. So my last name is G-O-S-S-E-T-T. And they can buy my book there. They can take a free child temperament test. It's a shortened version. There's my book. Nice job. Nice Vanna White. That's my Vanna moment. There. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and they can also just sign up for the session that you and Noah did, which is uh, Understanding Your Family 101. And that comes with tests for everyone in the family, including mom and dad, to help get you on the same page parenting. Because... Sometimes parents are just pushing against the tide of their child's temperament. And this will help you just to relax and to go with the flow. Because so many times you'll have in-laws or parents saying, oh, you need to Mm. do X, Y, and Z. And this way you can tell those people, nope, I am parenting my child exactly the way they need to be parented. I have, you know, I know their temperament and this is what they need. And it just gives you so much uh, peace of mind as parents. Thank you so much, Wendy. I appreciate what you have done for our family and I hope you can help a lot of other families. Noah, thank you for also joining. I know I talked about some hard topics. That was great. (laughs) That's our hug, our camera hug. Camera hug with the (laughs) wires. (laughs) All right, Wendy, take care. Thank you so much. Thanks, Wendy. And thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our weekly podcast and follow us on social media. Thanks for joining us on your adoption show. See you next episode.